Well, good afternoon to everybody. Today I am going to start my talk with uh, two very beautiful words. That is not a love or something like that, but uh, two beautiful words that is a failure and struggle. Uh, wait a while, I think uh, many of you think that uh, he is a totally mad, he is talking about a failure is a beautiful word. But really, uh, failure and success are two awesome words. And uh, I will give you my own life experience. I failed many times in my life. But all these failures and you know, struggle give me uh, so many you know, motivation, inspiration to do something different in the field of science and technology. When I was in class 12, I failed. I failed to qualify the most prestigious examination of India that is IIT. And after that, I really want to become the aerospace or a space engineer. My dream is lost. Again, I failed. And after that, I opt for any other engineering college. Uh, when I was in the second year of my uh, engineering, I proposed one girl. Again, she rejected me, and uh, again, I took, uh, you know, failed. And even today, 21st Feb, and today is her birthday. And uh, after that, Um, last year I gave the daily examination, not qualified, again failed. It doesn't mean that I am a totally failure person. But all these failures, struggle, team is something, you know, motivation, inspiration to do something different. And I achieved a lot in my life because I firmly believe that the success consists of going from failure to failure or without loss of enthusiasm. Uh, I am Bachelor of Technology in uh, Electronics and Communication Engineering and I am just 22 years old. I am from a very small town in Haryana, that is the Yamunanandu. There is a lack of uh, resources, lack of laboratories and no proper mentorship, no proper guidance. But still, you know, I am passionate about space science and technology. I am not a space engineer but passionate about it. Uh, but still there is a hope. I am not a, you know, Yeah. If I am not a space engineer, then now become a space debris cleaner. I am doing the research work in the field of uh, space uh, debris and space elevator system. And, uh, you know, as far as my interest is concerned uh, in the field of uh, space science and technology, I was really inspired by Dr. Kalpana Chawla. She was from our neighbor city, Karnal. I met with the Dr. Kalpana Chawla's father many times. We discussed her, all her you know, research work, how she started her career in the field of uh, Space Science from Punjab Engineering College to NASA. So all these things really uh, motivate me to do something different in the field of uh, space science. So when I was in uh, class 12, I was a bit interested in the topic of human life in space. I was always wondering about the questions whether human life is possible in space or not. Uh, is there any uh, sort of transportation system in space? Is there any sort of communication system in space is a sort of pollution in space like atomic pollution or not. So I was always wondered about all these questions. And after that I gave my plus two examination and I want to become the aerospace, not qualified for IIT. But I got the admission in one university, in a uh, private university, in the aerospace university. And when I came to know about the fee structure that is near about 25 to 40 lakhs and I dropped that option and go for another engineering and I opt for electronics and communication engineering. So, when I was in the first year of my engineering in 2008, I again started my research work in the field of space. And one day I sit in the temperature laboratory of my college and I found the topic of space traveling very interesting I start to assess its history and the recent talk. Initially I was, uh, you know, dissuaded by many people including the uh, chairman of my college and even faculty member and even my friends. Though I was 100% concentrated on my research work and I proposed some new methods to clean up the space junk from space. And at the age of 18 years, I wrote my very first research paper. And even at that time, even don't know how to write the research paper, you know, what is the manuscript of the research paper, what is IIT study standards, but still I wrote my very first research paper and submitted to uh, ISEC USC in association with the Microsoft and NASA. I was just hoping for the best because that was, that was my very first research paper. And after four or five months when I came to know about the results, my very first research paper is to uh, run a Jerome Pearson Award in association with the Microsoft and NASA. And that was just the beginning of my, that was just the beginning of my research uh, in the field of space science and you know, all these awards and achievements really motivate me. And after that, I received a doctor, Kalina Chadha, I used to a young innovator award, you know, made a space science panel award. So lots of awards, but I'm not working for all these awards and all these achievements, but 
I work for the development of society, humanity, and nation, and I propose some new methods to uh, mitigate this uh, space jam. So uh, I would like to uh, discuss about my research work in the field of uh, the space and the space debris. Space debris, space jam, or space space, like a pollution space. So uh, space debris has become a growing concern in recent years. Since collision with the orbital velocity is highly damaging the functional satellites in space and produce more and more space junk in space. So this space junk, you know, space junk is basically the collection of objects in, you know, in space around uh, Earth that were taken by the human being itself, but no longer useful purpose in space. That is, uh, the space junk is a collection of different satellites, your you know, equipment, boosters in space. So all this is a collection of space junk. So there are approximately 15,000 pieces of space junk in space that have in size greater than 10 centimeters and even millions and billions pieces of space junk in space have in size of few inches. So uh, I would like to share an example with you, uh, like in 2009 when the Russian satellite and American satellite collide with each other, it got into more than 500 pieces and just passed about 60 kilometers above the International Space Station at a speed of 2,63,000 kilometers per hour. And at that particular time, five astronauts were laid in, uh, in ISS. And I personally believe that uh, you know the life of a human being is very, very much closely compared to that of your machines or robots in space. So I propose some new methods, and for that I would like to show one clip to you about space jump. So I am working on this concept of how to mitigate the gain of the space jump. Problem like this on 15th of February 2013. I, I, I many of you heard about the uh, near about more than 1500 people injured in the Russia uh, after a meteor you know, strikes across the sky and you know blasted at a you know power of some atomic bomb in Russia your mountains. So in near future the gap is increasing day by day. So I think in near future instead of uh, this rain you will get this space uh, debris or not. So it's you now our duty to do something different in the field of uh, this and we propose some new methods and that may include. Uh, the use of uh, nanotube match technique using laser and the nanobot. Uh, in this technique, we are going to use uh, the concept of nanotube because uh, I believe that the nanotechnology is one of the most uh, powerful technology in 21st century. So we are going to use the nanotechnology, we are going to use, uh, make a match with the help of a carbon nanotube. So whenever any tiny particle of space jump that on that particular piece of uh, you know, mesh, CNC mesh, so immediately the mesh is activated and send the message to the laser and the nanobot and that particular piece of uh, nanobot collect the junk or put it in the junkyard. And after that again I started research work on this space junk. Why not we use this space junk for some useful purpose? That is not the idea. If we will uh, recycle this space junk and then definitely we will use it for some space structure or we will use this space junk in our future missions. And the last point I propose is the energy production from uh, space junk. And we know the most of the space junk in space is having a metallic property and by using the fuel cell concept uh, we will be going to use this uh, space junk for energy production and give the power to some international space station or uh, electronic equipment in space. And uh, 
after the, um, I got the idea of a space elevator system. And before that, uh, please tell me how many of you really want to go into space? I don't worry, we'll definitely come back on that. So, uh, it's a totally free and a safe ride. So, fasten your seatbelt and we'll take you all in the space for the next couple of minutes. So, uh, space elevator is basically the most promising space transportation system of going about in the mind, scaling with the logo. The same, same as that of the train riding in space. So, space elevator is a transportation system from Earth into deep space that is in the geostationary Earth orbit that is near about 36,000 kilometers above uh, Earth's space. So, uh, in a cell, like this, if we are going to make this space elevator concept, then definitely uh, we will remove the problem like the problem with the rocket system, this is like uh, the pollution by rockets. So, uh, we will, you know, perform more and more experiments in space with the help of the space elevator concept in the geogravity and after that the colonization on Mars and Moon is also possible with the help of the space elevator concept and uh, after that the dream to go into space like a space tourism is also possible with the help of uh, the space elevator concept. So there are some engineering problems that we are you know work out on this how to sort out those problems. So no doubt the space elevator will create a sort of revolution in the field of space investing in your future. I would like to show you a small clip of the space elevator uh, system. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. Please fasten and That is the team in this only team from India is complete for 30 million dollar price. Uh, we are going to make some lunar rover and send on the moon. And uh, apart from that, I wrote many research papers on the space journey, space and elevator concept. And uh, yeah, about my research paper was tracking more than 25 international and national conferences by NASA, ISRI, Triple, Microsoft, and apart from that. And uh, right now, I'm working on uh, one project that is a, you know, a very big dream of mine. It's not this is not only my dream; it's the dream of everyone. There is a dream of every youngster who fail, who fail in their life, like this, who face a problem, like this is the problem I face in my life. Uh, this is a dream for every youngster who is not having any uh, proper guidance from mentorship. So, uh, we are just going to make a sort of uh, first ever startup in India in the field of space science and technology. And that is our uh, art incorporate, that is the uh, analytic research and technology in incorporate. And uh, this is, we are just working on this project of uh, like how to set up this first space startup in India, the private space sector uh, in India. So, uh, at last, uh, uh, my life is uh, you know, filled with lots of ups and downs, but I never think of them as the obstacles in the way to my success. But I think them as the speed breaker in the way to my success. I jump apart from them very carefully and smartly. Because I, I believe that uh, the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge but imagination, and imagination has knowledge and doesn't need any qualification. Thank you very much.